FBG hasn't even done due diligence yet. So, you know, to, to even to value it seven times, oh, based on what? Just on the market perception or looking at, at the books? I mean, the, the board sellers of July, the books were open. They haven't availed themselves of that. No doubt that uh, this bid by TPG is highly mm. conditional because of that. So it is going to be interesting once due diligence is done whether we see a change in the terms of this bid on the table. But that's a key reason why we aren't seeing uh, more downside in Billabong share price. Mm. The, uh, the, the possibility of corporate action and takeover is really what's holding uh, together each share price. It does have some attractive brands in there. Private equity has been targeting it for a while. But of mm. course that tumble that we've seen in the share price and the offers coming through for Billabong uh, compared to the start of the year are ex much lower. Four-year turnaround plan, not surprising given the troubles that we are seeing in its business. So it is going into uh, more of a survival mode trying to turn around its business. But I really think it's the corporate activity that's interesting for Billabong rather than this turnaround plan. And we are expecting to see, I guess, more activity on that corporate front, front coming through. Particularly Atlas Iron. Take us through the results, but also with um, the, the kind of backdrop in mind, there's just been a note come out from Commonwealth Banks, kind of stating maybe the obvious, but it's still a good point. Iron ore producers are remaining under pressure because we've got this unusual disconnect between um, the iron ore price um, but also, and the Australian dollar. So you've got a very strong Australian dollar while iron ore prices are tracking lower. They were below 100 um, just on the Friday session. That leaves a lot of uh, these players quite vulnerable, according to CBA. Is there any evidence of that in, in Atlas's results today? Absolutely. That second half result really reflects that double-edged sword of the lower iron ore price that they saw during that second half as well as the high Australian dollar and that full-year result coming in below our expectations we we're expecting to see a profit result of 130 million dollars the underlying profit after taxes actually come in at 72 million dollars but on the flip side it's exceeded in terms of the dividend expectations we were actually expecting to see dividend at one cent and it's come in at three cents I don't think that's going to be enough to hold the share price up today and as you mentioned Brooke that's because of concern around iron ore prices. We've seen the, uh, uh, the Shanghai rebar price now down for te 10 consecutive sessions and if we have a look at the 62% uh, content of iron ore, well that dropped to $99.60 uh, per tonne, so under, under 100 US a tonne. So these iron ore miners very much under the spotlight because of the weakness that we are seeing in iron ore prices. Now there's a bit of a divergence in views whether that's uh, short-term seasonal and we are going to see a strong bounce back in the fourth quarter and some of the commentary that we heard from Fortescue was uh, quite bullish that we should see a, a short-term uh, rebound back to around the 150 US a tonne levels but of course other analysts are starting to uh, adjust their iron ore prices to be a bit more pessimistic there's uh, now forecast in the market that we could see a drop down to even the 80 US a tonne level so a complete divergence in terms of views in iron ore and that uncertainty is going to lead to volatility in some some of these pure iron ore players like Atlas Iron Fortescue. We saw a pretty roller coaster week for these iron ore players last week. Atlas Iron was actually down by 12% for the week last week. This result coming in below expectations. If we have a look at the statutory profit, they, they have come in with a loss, but we're really ignoring that line because of the effect of the MRRT. And there's a 115 million MRRT related uh, tax deferred liability which relates uh, to that headline. So we are looking at the underlying numbers today. But the under underlying numbers looking like they've come in below expectations although the dividend has exceeded expectations but no doubt sentiment is going to be driven somewhat uh, by the the iron ore pricing that we're seeing at the moment on the spot market. Julia market expectations beyond all the numbers today uh, some catalyst this week for us to punch above our weight. Today it's all going to be about earnings and the mm. other side is uh, dividends being paid. It is still dividend season and we do see a number of big blue chips going ex-dividend today. So Woodside Petroleum in that energy space is trading ex-dividend so that's likely to have put some downward pressure on the energy sector. But we also see the likes of Suncorp, Midway, Coca-Cola, Amatol, ASX as well as Ansel trading ex-dividend today. We've seen FKP property going into a trading halt so we'll be watching that one closely. Announcement is due by Wednesday there. But in terms of commodity prices, everyone's watching the iron ore price and while we've been talking about the physical cliff in the US coming up a lot of uh, commentators now is talking about the capex cliff that Australia faces so that one's very much in the international uh, spotlight we have a look at our market today though we did see the S&P 500 index in the US up by 0.7 percent pointing to a positive session but the gains there were led by the defensive sectors of telecom and healthcare and in fact the material sector was the only uh, sector in the S&P 500 which actually saw a decline
decline on Friday. So we are expecting those defences to outperform, especially in the face of the Europeans coming back from their holidays and Europe likely to be back in the spotlight and Jackson Hole at the end of the week. Just before we lose you uh, as well, it would be kind of errant to, to not flag the Sundance uh, offer from uh, Han Long and the acceptance of it, Peter. Just your, you know, amidst all the ongoing debates about, you know, the outlook, uh, the prognosis for growth, here we have this, this offer of 1.37 billion. Uh, you know, this has been dragging on for a year. It's a significant development. What's your call? Well, we, if you have a look at the share price of Sundance Resources, it really hasn't been reflecting that original 50 cents uh, offer at all. So the market hasn't been putting a high probability on this one. But we know that the key to Han Long's takeover bid, while it has been dropped, is the funding. And I guess the market watching that uh, dropped uh, bid price that we've seen now from 57 cents, it looks down to 45 cents, um, and also the funding potential of that. Not surprising given that we are seeing the soft uh, backdrop in terms of global growth as well as iron ore pricing. And this is a project that does need a lot of capex to be developed um, a very attractive resource um, but a lot of money needed to develop this resource and I guess that's really what Hanlong's about so we'll be watching the funding but unfortunately not good news for Sundance resources uh, shareholders seeing that be dropping from 57 cents down to 45